Hello, welcome to this third tutorial in the Midas Chen tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial, we will be looking at the finite element analysis of a rigid jointed frame. This is again a statically determinate structure. So, um, we'll show you the uh, results from the software, finite element software, how to modulate, and also the um, correlation with the hand calculations. Now, just to give you a description of the frame, this is how it looks like. We have two pin supports. So, this is not having any roller support. So, you have pin supports at A and H, point H. And you have a pin connection at the top of this frame. So, that makes, that's why uh, this particular analysis becomes uh, determinate, even though it has four unknowns, two horizontal reactions and two vertical reactions, which are unknowns. Uh, you have several point loads applied on the structure and also a uniformly distributed load applied on the left side of the pitched roof and uh, we can see uh, we'll, we'll see how to model this structure step by step in Midas Gen and look at some of the important conclusions that we can derive from this type of an analysis so basically the objective of this analysis is to calculate the reactions to calculate the actual force diagram, the bending moment diagram, and the shear force diagram, because these are the results that are very use, very important, and also useful um, for designing the structure uh, and um, performing the checks on the structure. So let's see how we can model it in Midas Gen. Okay, so here we have the blank screen of Midas Gen. We can start by clicking on New Project, and that's the uh, Midas Gen model view. So first of all, we start by defining the units. We can go to the status bar here and change the units to kilonewtons and meters, and then we set the analysis type to two-dimension analysis. Uh, which is model structure type exit plane so all the forces and all the elements will be in the XZ XZ plane okay then uh, we uh, start by uh, modeling a node at the origin so this time we will be will not use some structure wizard at, as we used in the previous uh, videos or previous tutorials we'll start by simple uh, node by node generation of the elements so we go to nodes create nodes and enter 000 and apply so that's one node generated uh, we can display the number of this node if I click on node number here so that node number is displayed and click on the front view so that's the node number one if you wish to increase the size of the font size of the node number you can go to this display icon display option node number and increase the font number font to say 11 click OK so that's more visible now now we will use this node to create the column on the left let's go back to the PDF to see what what distances should be used so we basically have a column AC with a uh, midpoint B so it's 2.5 meters two times we need to copy that element so going back to the software we use model elements and extrude option just like we used in tutorial number two for the truss uh, structure extrude and select or highlight this node so you just click on this node to select it and define in the DZ DX divided DZ we enter only in the DZ 2.5 meters and two times so that will create a vertical element apply let's see in the top view so that's the element generated let's go back to the PDF and see what are the next distances we need to enter so we have a point D which is 4 meters to the right of point C and 2 meters above point C so basically we have to enter a distance 4 comma 0 comma 2 for creating this particular element 
so again we select this time node number three and enter we delete everything here and we enter four comma zero comma two and remember to enter only number of times as one and apply so we have got this element now okay now again select this node here let's see what distance we need to copy that's two meter down and uh, three meters two times in the x direction so basically effectively we have three comma zero comma one uh, added two times so here we enter three comma zero comma one and that is two times and apply oops sorry i need to change the direction so that is three comma zero comma minus one select the node again and apply because it's in the downward direction okay now i select this particular node here and let's see what distance i need to move it uh, so three meters and three meters so two times three meters in the downward direction so that makes it zero comma zero comma minus three two times and apply again click on the front view so that's the skeleton of the structure generated now uh, let's define some materials and pro sections quickly so go to model properties material add so we'll be using um, user defined material again so 2 e times 8 so 2 into 10 to the power 8 kilonewton per meter square and that is material 1 and click OK close this then go to model properties section add uh, this time let us use the I section for the columns so we select the standard British standard PS493 and select the British standard section which is uh, universal column 305 by 305 by 158 okay you can select any section doesn't matter the section properties will not be you will not will not matter in the analysis as long as the structure is determinate so that's uh, the I section click OK and close so all the sections have now been entered now we will define the boundaries or supports so we have pinned supports at both both these nodes so we go to model boundaries supports and select node number one and node number eight and assign them as pinned which is dx and dz restraint so no rotational restraint and no y direction restraint and apply so i'll close this now to see what information I've entered in this model, I can go to works tree and see that I've defined two supports. You can display and undisplay them. Okay. You have uh, sections. You can go to properties to edit the sections. So all the editing and highlighting the model can be done from the works tree. Now if you observe this uh, drawing here, you have a pin at the top it's at point D. So we need to pin any one of these elements at point D so we use the feature of moment release or beam and release to release the moments at this point so pin connection basically means that we are releasing um, the moments so that the, we are allowing some rotation at this point so we go to model boundaries and select beam and release okay and select uh, so we want to pin only this node so for this particular element we'll use fixed pin so that this j end is pinned how do you know that this is uh, i or this is j i mean which end to uh, fix pin means it could have been this one could have been fixed and this could have been pinned so to know that which end is i or which end is j we refer to the local axis for this element and to display the local axis we go to display element local axis and click OK 
if you see the local axis x here the red line you will find that it's going from node number 3 to 4 so the de general direction is always from i to j so that means node number 3 is i node number 4 is j so which means that uh, let me just switch to the line view by clicking here now it's more clear so which means that I need to release the moments at J so that's why I need to fix uh, fix node number 3 and pin node number 4 or J point and now I select this element and click apply so you have a pin here and that's how the moments are released and you can now get a pin type behavior so I close this dialog box now and switch to the front view now we have another problem here now if you notice carefully if I rotate this model make it say isometric we have a s another problem in this particular case is uh, if you see the local axis y for all the elements all the y axis you will find that uh, for all the elements uh, all the all these elements here you have y axis pointing uh, into the screen whereas um, these elements here you have y axis pointing in the opposite direction now what it does is it's it's no it's not a problem from the analysis point of view it's absolutely no problem from the analysis point of view but when you are seeing the results for the forces because uh, in our in our example we are required to calculate all the beam forces all the moments all the shear forces and actual forces in that calculation it becomes um, difficult to interpret the result because let's say if you're looking after the moments of this element then moments are always will always be uh, displayed along the about the y-axis local y-axis now let me just save this model save it okay so I was saying that the moments are displayed about the local y-axis now if you have say a hogging moment uh, on these two members for example if you have a hogging moment here that is a negative moment then uh, although the shape in the software and the hand calculations will match but the sign then the sign of the moments that is negative or positive or you can say hogging or sagging that is determined by the direction of the y-axis so in this particular case if both are having hogging moments then you will find that um, the left one left column is giving you uh, say a positive moment then the right column will be giving you a negative moment which um, is correct from the sign convention of the axis but from the from the user point of view it might be confusing to interpret the results so that's why it is always a good practice to align the axis at least the the say the y-axis because the moments the sign of the moments is crucial for for designing the structure for negative or positive moments so we select these members and we just change the local axis angle so in this case for these two elements or this column we need to reverse or change it by 180 degrees so we go to model elements change parameters change element parameters and select element local axis select change and enter 180 degrees select both these elements so I have used the select single option and just um, I, uh, I have drawn a window from right to left just touching these two elements and click apply and now you see that y axis is reversed okay so now the moments all will have the correct sign as per the hand calculation so now I close this and we can start applying the loads on the structure so for the loads I will undisplay the local axis so that it's more clear while viewing the model so click OK right so let's go back to the drawing and see what loads have been applied on the structure okay so we have 12 kN and 8 kN horizontal forces on the left column so let us focus first on the horizontal forces because there are a lot of forces on this structure so 8, 5, 12 and 8 
So we'll remember this and we'll apply this at the corresponding location. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, name uh, the load case. So we go to load static load. Let's name it P and user defined add. Now we go to loads. For any point load, we use the nodal loads option. Let's P select the name as P and we focus on the horizontal loads first. So enter 8 kilonewton in the positive x direction. Select node number 3 and apply. Then we select 12 kilonewtons. Let me check. Um, I have a short memory. So 12 kilonewton. Apply. Then we have 5 kilonewtons here. Apply. And we have 8 kilonewtons here. Apply. Okay. So horizontal forces are applied. Let's focus on the vertical ones. So we have 15 kilonewton here, 15, 25, 35, and 20. So we click on this node, select this node, remove fx, and enter fz. So that is minus. Let me see again. Minus 15. So that's minus 15. Apply. Then we have minus 25 here, minus because it's in the downward direction, 35 here, and I guess it was 20, yeah, 20 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's all the concentrated uh, nodal forces applied. Now we will uh, focus on this UDL which is 12 kN per meter. So let's see. We go to loads, element loads for applying this uniformly distributed load. Load case name is P, uniform loads type, and direction is global set direction or vertically downwards. Now, here, since you can see in the figure that, <coughs> sorry the load is not applied on the entire length of of this member it has been applied on the uh, along only on the projected um, length of this member so only on the x uh, length of this member so that means when we are applying it in the structure we need to make sure that uh, we have selected the projection option so we'll select projection yes and apply minus 12 and select this member so select single and select this and apply so it will look like it has been applied uh, along the entire length not on the projected length but actually internally since we have selected it yes so internally the calculation will contain only the projected length not the entire length so from the display point of view it, it does look up the other way around but it is actually doing the projection so close this and let's check by defining by displaying the values so right click on nodal loads and display so these are all the nodal loads and right click on element beam loads to display the element beam loads okay so i'll undisplay this now and undisplay the nodes we don't want the nodes now let's uh, run the analysis so i click on this button here and perform the analysis so the analysis is done now let us look at the results one by one so we'll start with the reactions first reaction forces moments choose values here and select decimal points two and click okay so these are the reactions we have uh, 4.3 to 64.07 78.93 and minus 37.32 we we'll look at the results from the hand collaborations also. Let us see the software results first. Um, just uh, to, to note here is uh, we can see the deformed shape as well in the software. So since uh, we haven't we haven't done uh, we don't require the deflection for this problem. So I'll just quickly browse through it how to see the displacements. Okay, so that's the click on the deformed shape here deform 
and we'll check real deformation and click OK. So these are the deformation in meters. Okay, so deformations depend upon the section shape. Uh, so it will change if you change the section shapes or material properties, material elasticities. So this is the only property which will depend. This this property as well as the stress property will depend on the uh, actual dimensions of the element. The other things like forces uh, in a statically determined structure will not depend on the member properties. So we go to results, forces, and this time beam diagrams. Select actual force first. We don't want the deformed shape, so I'll check off the deformed. And um, we want to see the results of actual forces at all the um, locations of the elements. So I'll select I and J, which are the two ends of an element, and click apply. So here you will see the values of the actual forces. You can zoom in or out using the mouse scroll button. Scroll in or scroll out and click to finish the zoom. So these are the values of the actual forces. To see the shear forces, you click on FZ. Again, how do you decide which is uh, which shear force is FZ or actual force is FX? That is done by looking at the local axis, which we have already seen. So apply, that is the shear force diagram. So maximum shear force uh, is here, 48 kilonewtons. Okay. Then you have the moment, my. So apply. That's the bending moment diagram for the structure. Okay. Now we will look at the uh, at the the hand calculations and see how they correlate with the software so I'll take you to the last few pages of this document just quickly explain to you the different ways of calculating the reactions so for the reactions it's just simple equations of equilibrium equations of force equilibrium like vertical forces should be zero at a particular support uh, horizontal uh, sorry, vertical forces should be zero in the entire structure. Horizontal forces should be zero, and moments can be zero at the supports, pin supports, and also at the pin joint. So that gives you the reactions, all the four reactions. Then to calculate the forces, we just take free body diagrams for each member and calculate the forces uh, in this manner. So we have free body diagrams for each member and we define the pending, we, we calculate the pending moment and shear force at different locations. For shear forces, we resolve the vertical component of the free body diagrams using simple geometry rules to get actual force and shear force. And then finally, we get this kind of diagrams, which are very similar to what we obtained from our analysis, finite element analysis. That means the finite element analysis is in correlation with the hand calculation, as you can see here. Let's just zoom in. So that's the Midas results, and that's the hand calculation result. Okay. So this concludes the session today for the rigid jointed frames. To know more about the other types of examples, simple examples or Midas Gen, stay tuned to the Midas UK YouTube page and especially to the Midas Gen Tutorials channel which uh, specifically focuses on this type of examples. That's it for now and thank you very much.